fingers, their bent necks, hammering hands. How do I get rid of that? Who fixed your eye beams, keyed your corbels, poured your concrete. Bless your ghosts, reaper ships from Jamaica, still docking at daybreak. The banana fiends still unpacking crates and waiting for the whistle to blow. Bless you, number nine, the last of your tribe to be built in Philly with a single story. Bless your permanence, blunt beauty, your languid loyalty. Bless the visionaries who resurrected you. Now the bridges and boats do double takes, and you turn the river's head. Peer of peers, now your many stories, and we are your united fruit. Free, alighting from many republics of the body and mind. Garden of artists along the water. Cargo of undomesticated dreams. Hi everyone, this is Jero Freeman. I'm with the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation. Um, we have three people in. So Sarah, um, how about we wait maybe two more minutes and see if more people show up? Sounds good. Great, thank you. All right, well, I think we can um, we can go ahead and get started and um, people can continue to trickle in, but I wanna be respectful of everybody's time. Um, so I just wanna welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is Sarah Everly. I am the creative director for the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation. And I also oversee the studio program at Cherry Street Pier. 
Um, just want to encourage everyone to use the question and answer function on the presentation to submit your questions. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll go through and we'll all answer questions for you. Um, we also have two of our current artists in residence here with us today, um, Athena Scott and a Corey Hanzo. So each year, Cherry Street Pier welcomes a new cohort of artists, artist collectives, and nonprofits to be part of an artist in residence program. Um, I don't know why I did, how I did that. Let me start that over again. There we go. Um, so we are currently accepting new applications for the studio spaces. Um, through October 22nd, that's the application deadline, and then the studio rentals will start on February 1st, um, 2022, hard to believe. Um, just So just a little bit about DRWC. Uh, DRWC, the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation, is a nonprofit whose mission is to design, develop, and program, and maintain public amenities along the central Delaware River waterfront. Um, we aim to transform the waterfront into a vibrant destination for recreational, cultural, and commercial activities for resident and visitors to Philadelphia. Um, Cherry Street Pier was developed by the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation as a public park with a focus on the arts. Um, it was originally a municipal pier that was built in 1916 and first opened in 1918. And then it was reimagined and opened in its current iteration in October of 2018. Um, the pier consists of several exhibition spaces, one of which you can see here. This is the one we call the gallery. Um, we also obviously have 14 studios. These are some photos of the studio spaces. Um, and then we also have an area we call the marketplace where we host markets um, amongst other programming and performances. Um, and there's another shot of the marketplace. Um, and then at the end of the pier, we have an area we call the garden with these um, shipping container planters. Um, and it's currently being used as a bar and restaurant. Um, and then finally, we have the trolleys, which are um, basically have been redesigned as food trucks. And we have an emerging restaurant tour program. So um, they're designed to be either a first brick and mortar location or maybe a secondary brick and mortar location for emerging restaurant tours. Currently, we have French Toast Bites, which is a local black owned business on the pier. Um, and then here's just a little overview of the pier. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but this is the garden area out here. This is the area I call it the marketplace. You can see it's, it's a huge area. Um, this is the gallery space. It's 2000 square feet. We have another gallery area that we use up on the second floor, the mezzanine level. Um, and then we have an amphitheater here that we use for programming and the platform, which we also use for programming. Um, and just to give you an idea, this is Columbus out here. Um, and this is all water all around it. <laughs> um, so the artist in residence program seeks to foster a unique space for emerging and established artists to collaborate, create and exhibit their work. Um, the studios being located in such a large public space allow visitors um, to Cherry Street Pier to get a glimpse into the world of art making. We accept artists in all stages of their career and we encourage the artists and residents to use each other as a resource. Um, we're really looking for applicants that are open to collaborating with the other artists and residents on the pier and our programmatic partners. And um, we even have artists that have collaborated with our food vendors and, and other people. Um, so the pier has uh, eight ground floor studios and six mezzanine level studios. Uh, the one you're looking at here is a mezzanine level studio. The mezzanine um, level studios are approximately 290 square feet and they rent for 400 per month. Um, and then the ground floor studios, which are slightly larger, they're about 440 square feet. Those rent for 500 a month. Um, and that rent includes all utilities, including high-speed internet, 
the only additional fee outside of that studio rent is if you do not have your own insurance policy, you can buy into the Cherry Street Peer Artist Group insurance policy, which is an additional $15 per month, um, pretty nominal. And I will point out um, that the mezzanine level studios um, are not ADA accessible. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind when you're, when you're deciding which studio you might want to apply for. Um, all of the studios are heated and air conditioned. They have their own individual units. Um, they don't have plumbing, but we do have slop sinks located in sink rooms off of each of the restrooms. Um, and each studio has its own 100 amp single phase service in it. Um, the studios are provided unfurnished, so they're given to you as sort of a white box, and um, they're yours to um, design however you wish. Um, you can paint the walls, you can paint the floors. Um, we just ask that you return it to us at the end of your lease as the same white box that we provided it to you as. Um, the studios are accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week to the artists. So, the pier has um, public hours where the public is allowed in. Um, currently that's 12 to 10 p.m. on weekdays and 11 to 11 on weekends. Um, and then outside of those times, artists are given a key card so that they can go ahead and access the pier whenever they need to use their studio spaces. Um, and then the studios are managed by the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation. And once selected, artists will be expected to sign a lease with DRWC. Um, the standard term of the lease agreement is a year, although um, we do encourage artists to reapply if they'd like to stay on for longer than a year. Um, but just so you know, you, you basically, the application process is the same for a returning artist versus a new artist. So they're all kind of thrown back into the same pool of artists. Um, and then also we ask for first and last month's rent when you move into the studio. Um, um, and then I just want to talk about um, some of the benefits of a studio at Cherry Street Pier beyond, you know, having a studio, having your own studio space to work out of. Um, as an artist in residence, you get preferential access to markets and ex exhibition spaces throughout the pier. So if we're hosting a market, um, we always reserve spots for our artists that want to also sell at that market. Um, we encourage our artists to exhibit outside of their studios and take advantage of the different exhibition spaces that we have to offer. So we sort of um, try to give the artists first right of refusal before bringing in outside exhibitors. Um, we also encourage any artists on the pier to um, organize programming, to teach workshops, and just otherwise actively contribute to the overall experience for visitors to the pier. Um, and uh, one of the big benefits of being on the pier is um, the opportunity to interact with hundreds of thousands of visitors um, throughout the year. And then the other fun side benefit is all of the programming and activities that we're constantly doing on the pier. You get a front row seat to uh, watch all of this programming from your studio space. So. Um, this is the slide is um, Ballet X, which they came over the summer and used the pier as a rehearsal space. So we all got to enjoy free ballet performances um, throughout the course of a couple of weeks. Um, here's another one. Um, this is Orchestra 2001, who's a current tenant on the pier. Um, They're often hosting concerts or um, rehearsals. So that's another fun treat. This is obviously a photo that was taken prior to the pandemic. <laughs> um, and then here's just another photo of, this was the Dia de los Muertos celebration that we held um, last October. Um, so there's just all kinds of, the pier is, is, is always active um, and all kinds of fun things. Uh, to do. And then some of the other benefits are just the collaborative relationship between the artists and our staff. Um, we have a, a programming team, a marketing team, an operations team. Um, so there's a, there's a good support structure for you as an artist on the pier. Um, the support structure includes myself. Um, I'm here as sort of a curatorial and programmatic resource. 
Um, we have on-site managers, we have security staff, we have facility staff, we have Jackie Y, who's the director of parks and attractions. And then also we have our amazing marketing team, um, Jero Freeman and Mike Barone, who are here to help um, promote your work as much as possible. Um, so this slide just kind of goes over the application process a little bit. So as I mentioned, applications are due this year on October 22nd. Um, and I highly encourage you before you submit your application to go on our website, uh, follow us on social media, sign up for our newsletter, sort of familiarize yourself with the peer. Um, so you kind of get a feel for the types of things that we're looking for. You can also look at the current cohort of artists and the past cohorts of artists. So you can kind of see uh, what, what we've brought into the peer. Um, and then um, just to touch on some of the selection criteria for the artists, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so we have values-based criteria for selection. So um, we want the studios to really reflect an authentic Philadelphia. And what we mean by that is we, we hope the applicants um, reflect the population of Philadelphia and include traditionally under, underrepresented populations. Um, and then we hope that the artists will provide diverse offerings. And so we want the applicants to represent a broad range of artistic disciplines and experience levels. So, um, we never want all of the studios to be all photographers or all painters. So we try to get a really good mix of all the different types of art um, that are out there. Um, and then we want to support emerging artists and entrepreneurs. So we, we want to see in your application how um, you're poised to benefit from being part of Cherry Street Pier, both creatively and professionally. Um, we want to support learning and collaboration. Um, so applicants need to be willing and eager to be part of a collaborative community focused initiative. Um, and then some of the operations based criteria for selection, we look to see um, if you will be active in your studio when we have a lot of foot traffic on the pier. It's really important that the studio spaces feel active and engaging to the visitors to the pier. Um, we want to know if this is going to be your primary workspace or a secondary workspace. Uh, we want to understand how you're going to contribute to the programming on the pier or, or how you'd like to contribute. Um, and then the final one is how will the studio be engaging to visitors when you're not using your studio space? So we encourage the artists to leave their lights on so that people can still look in and see the studio spaces. Um, Athena has a great stop action video playing in her window when she's not in the studio. Um, and then, um, and then just to touch again on the application process itself. So once you fill out the application form, it will be reviewed both internally and by an external panel. Um, and then if you make it past that round, then um, there will be an in-person or web-based, it depends on the situation, um, with the selection committee. So they'll, they'll wanna interview you, we'll ask some of these questions, um, we'll wanna hear more. Uh, we'll, we'll just basically ask you to elaborate on your application. Um, and then we'll be sending out final notifications to the applicants in mid-December. So that's when you'll hear if you were accepted into the studio program. And then February 1st will be the move-in date uh, for, the, for the new cohort of artists. Um, and now, I would like to turn it over to um, Athena Scott, who is a member of the second cohort of artists at Cherry Street Pier. She's up on the mezzanine level. Um, so hopefully she can give us a little insight into what it's like to be an artist at Cherry Street Pier. I'm gonna turn it to you, Athena. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Athena Scott. Um, I am a primarily a painter, but I, I do a little bit of everything. Um, I guess initially um, coming to Cherry Street, it was kind of a way for me to kind of get out of my uh, little box at home and um, try to share my art with like the public. Um, so I didn't want to go too hard. 
then pick a studio on the, the first floor because that's where most of the traffic comes through. So I picked the second level just to kind of ease myself into kind of um, uh, engaging uh, with the public. Um, it has been interesting um, because uh, my time there started during uh, the pandemic, the start of the pandemic. So um, I'm not, I'm, I had come to Cherry Street prior and saw how active it was with like all the events and um, the public coming through. So I was kind of looking forward to that, but then with the pandemic, it kind of um, changed things up a little bit. Um, but in a way it was good for me because uh, it, it still kind of eased me into dealing with the public. Um, so initially it became more of a, a, a workspace um, and, you know, a nice escape to go during the um, pandemic, you know, because thank goodness they were, they were open and allowed us to kind of work in our space uh, during that time. We were delayed a little bit come starting, but once we got in um, and I guess um, what I was looking for most, I think, was the community as far as like working with the other artists um, and meeting other artists. Um, and so far, um, it's been pretty cool. Um, I've been able to do uh, a show with Corey, who's going to talk after me, and um, Tomcat23, Kenny. Um, which was, you know, I had never really done anything like collaborative like that before. And, and it was pretty cool. We had the larger gallery on the first floor um, and, you know, working with them and putting that all together really kind of made me step out of my comfort zone. So um, I just, overall the experience has just been really good and um, it's kind of helped me grow uh, a little bit more um, as an artist and, um, yeah, I'm not really sure what else I should say, but it's a good time. Um, I think if you have, um, if you're able to do it, it's a it's a great space to get get into and like to, to you know get um, eyes on your work. Um, it it brings different opportunities to you that you didn't you think. Like, I think my first month, Sarah somehow or another got me on like. Channel 17 for some morning show or whatever. I had no idea. I blacked out. I don't know what I said, but it was a good time. And it was, you know, it was something that <laughs> it was something that I could put in my diary. Um, but uh, it was a great experience. And I really um, can say that, you know, I've I've grown a lot since being in that space. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And if anyone has specific questions for Athena, um, being a fine artist on the second floor of Cherry Street Pier, feel free to drop those into the question and answer session. Um, and then I also now I want to turn it over to a Corey Hanzo, who has actually been with us on the pier. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me go back. Um, He's been with us since the very beginning. Uh, he moved in in October of 2018. So he has had the full experience pre-pandemic and during the pandemic. Um, so I'll turn it over to you, Corey. Can you hear me? Yep. You hear me? Okay, cool. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm, I'm a Corey Hanzo, um, current uh, artist in residence at Studio One at Cherry Street Pier. Um, like Sarah said, I've been there from the, before it was even built. So um, I was there like when they, they just told me the concept of it and the concept, the vision was so crazy. Um, and it was given to me from my wife and she had heard about it before I even heard about it. And, and, and um, it was just a cool thing because I've always heard about like an art section um, on South Street, but I, I came too late. I wasn't there to participate in. And when I heard about Cherry Street Pier trying to basically bring that type of community um, back into the city, that just like, it just lit a fire um, under me. And I really like, just, I'm, I'm really about the vision of what the uh, pier is supposed to be. 
and I've actually seen it. I'm watching you actually grow into that, um, especially with the community part that uh, Athena mentioned. Like there hasn't been any drama at all in the past, in this group or the previous group, there's been no like conflict. Everybody's like clicked. And we just, and it's literally like um, Sarah mentioned it with um, emerging and established artists. So the wealth of information that you can get is so, um, so vast in addition to people that walk by or people that come into your studio. Um, for me, it's been uh, a learning experience. And that's how I look at the whole thing as a learning experience because I never planned on even, I didn't think we'd possibly even have a studio in that space or that anyone would get my art. So for them to get my art and see it before I could see it. And then when I'm there, I'm being featured on WHYY, like I'm getting exposure I wasn't looking for. I was just trying to learn how to be an artist and embrace this um, and embrace like the, the gifts that I, the acknowledgement gift I was given and how to use it and find a platform and where to go. But this place has literally given me um, more than I couldn't, I can't describe the words. It's, 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 a, it's so unique, um, unexpected. And what I could say is that if you appreciate having the resources available to you that are offered to you, or if you appreciate information, if you just, you just want to be able to be in a space where you can just, whatever, someone would just let you rock and be you, this is the space that will do that. Um, I'm trying to think of if there's anything, um, I think it's pretty much, it's pretty much, this is a space, it's so much offered and there's so many unexpected things. In addition to like the markets, the markets um, um, are also great to, if you wanna, if you, if you wanna, you know, see how you, your work would sell or see their, just the general public's reaction to uh, what you offer is, but it's very, it's, it's, it's so laid back and there's no beating you over the head with trying to make sure you do certain things that it just allows you to just, like I said, just grow. Um, and and it's, 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 it's just a dope experience that I can't really, I, I'm trying to word it, but I, I can't. Because uh, I, because I, if you ask me, my personal experience, I'm just lucky to have. Um, it was like fate; it came across at the right time, and it's just. And for me, I can say specifically, like it's taught me my purpose and taught me my uh, showed me my, my purpose and where um, where I want to go and where I want to contribute and how I can contribute to the culture. Thanks, Sakori. That's really that's really great to hear. I think this the photo that we're all looking at is a, a great example of collaboration on the pier. This was taken by one of the other studio artists, um, James B. Abbott. And it wasn't planned. All of it is or, it's organic. So it's literally that came from Jim saying, hey, do, you know, if you want, I'll show you how to take pictures of your pieces. And then what happened was we just ended up spending a whole day there taking, he just wanted to take a picture of everything in there. And then when I had an exhibition, Jim had the pictures. And he was like, hey, you know, you wanna, you wanna add? I said, hey, look, I'll appreciate whatever you help me. Jim like gave me information and spoke to me, explained things to me. Jim literally, um, if not Jim, it's Ed explaining um, to me how like what's the latest technology like with NFTs and, and how I could benefit from that. It's like constant information given. Even Sharif, Sharif lived like 50 million lives in this art world. So Sharif just, Anything I go through, I can literally go to Shreve and say, hey, I'm experiencing this. He's experienced it. Um, with Athena, like Lith Athena to me is, Athena is the other part. It's like what I need is like, what's, or what we need is our other artists to inspire other artists. So when I see her, you know, paint, I see her pen, just literally her pen, I see her pen going at it. So that just makes me go, oh, wow. And I see what she's creating that I want to create something. Like I made a Miles Davis piece that I never probably would have made if Athena didn't say she was doing a Miles Davis piece. And I literally like surprised myself because I didn't think I would nail it and I got it. And she said, I said, you got it, you got it. 
but it was the fact that I was inspired to do it and it just made me do it and then worry about it later. Like, can I pull it off? No, it already happened. But that wouldn't have happened if um, we weren't in this environment. And mind you, Athena, I've seen Athena at the pier before she, you know, had a studio space there. I think she came through doing the Tiny Room for Elephants uh, festival. Like she yeah. literally bought a, a pen from me out of my shop. Okay. So I remember like faces and I, and I was there I, every day. I've seen everybody go by. So even just that's a benefit, if not that. If you want to just be in a community and see the community and engage with people as they walk by, and, um, even just the people around that live around there or just come through every day, it's just you have general conversation. So it's a very laid back and organic space. It's not, it's not a lot of, um, it's not, it doesn't get too crazy in there. So it's, it's like the perfect environment for an artist if you want to engage in people at your own pace. That's great. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Um, well, now I'd really like to open it up to questions. Um, I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen and I will drop my email and the website into the chat if you need it. So if you have any um, specific questions that we don't get to today, feel free to email me directly. Um, I'm happy to answer those questions and I'm happy to forward questions to Athena and Akori if you want to talk to them about their specific experiences. So let me just share my window. Um, so um, now I'm going to ask Emma, <laughs> if you don't mind helping us out um, with some of the questions that have come up, both the ones that have been submitted prior to um, today and any questions that are coming up today. Definitely, and I also am making up some of my own because I know that this is gonna go online, so I think it'll be helpful. And so I think the first biggest question is, you know, how do you define artists and what mediums are accepted and what about music? Yes, great questions. Um, so the studios are really designed to be makers spaces. So we were really interested in people that are actually creating in the studio space, whatever that means. Um, I don't think there are really any restrictions on media mediums outside of um, logistical restrictions. So like obviously heavy machinery, can be challenging. We do um, we do have one artist that uses a laser engraving machine, um, but we can't have like um, welding on the pier. Um, propane is not allowed indoors, so that eliminates all of the welding. And then we just try to make sure that the mediums are respectful to one another. So um, that's where music kind of falls into place. So we do have um, Orchestra 2001, which is a nonprofit um, contemporary orchestra organization. They do uh, practice on the pier. Um, we haven't brought in um, many musicians because the studios are not soundproofed currently. Um, that's something that we are hoping to do in the future is create a studio that might um, house musicians. So it's really about respect. Um, you know, you share, you're sharing the studio space with other artists. So we don't want anything that will detract from other people's experiences. Um, but yeah, we're open. Um, we, we, don't, we don't have a strict definition of what art means. Um, I'm excited by new media and people that are working in unusual art forms. Um, I think that's, um, that's a great thing for all of the artists to be exposed to. And I think just that balance of making sure that we have um, people working in a, in a variety of media. I mean, we've had, um, we had a poet um, in our first group of artists. Um, we had a literary nonprofit. I mentioned Orchestra 2001. Um, so we're, you know, there's no strict definition of what art is. We're, we're open, we're looking for all media. So performance art, um, visual art, music, um, all of those things, as long as it falls within <laughs> safety parameters and is respectful of your shared spaces. 
Was there another part to that question? Athena, Corey, do you want to answer anything? No, I think you covered it. Okay, so the next question um, is, if you go back through, I, I did type this out, but if you could also just explain um, the rent structure again. Yes, of course. Um, so there are two size studios. Uh, the larger studios are a little over 400 square feet and they are on the ground floor and those are rented for 500 a month. Um, and that is again, all inclusive. So no additional utilities that includes internet. Um, and the only thing that it does not include is insurance. So if you do not have um, your own insurance, then um, it's really easy to just opt into the artist group policy, which is really nominal fee. It's only $15 a month. Um, and then upstairs are the smaller studios. Um, those are 290 square feet. Those are $400 a month. And as Athena mentioned, they get a less foot traffic than the ones on the ground floor. So um, we, we tend to try to put people that um, need a little bit more privacy in their studio space upstairs. So, you know, if you, if, if the way that you make your work, you don't like to be interrupted by people a lot, you know, if you, if you get into this mindset and someone knocking on your door really throws you off, then I highly recommend the upstairs studios. Um, if you like that public engagement and if you like feedback and you wanna engage with people as much as possible, then those downstairs studios are definitely your, your primary choice. Um, and then also just the, the upstairs studios are not ADA accessible. So um, if that is something that concerns you, then definitely look for the downstairs studios. Great. And then um, what are the access hours for the artists? And I think also, how does that compare to the public access? Yes. So um, currently our public hours, we are open from noon until 10 p.m. on weekdays. Um, we stay open until 11 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. And on Saturdays and Sundays, we open at 11 a.m. Um, the artists in the studios have 24 uh, hour access to the studio spaces. So um, you, you do have a chance to utilize your studio when the general public is not in the space. Um, and then we just ask that if you are utilizing your studio after hours, you just keep us abreast if you're having people in your studio space. They're not really designed to be like a hangout kind of area, they're really workspaces. And um, are the spaces for individuals only? Can you do groups? Can you, and then uh, similarly, another question was, um, if you only need like a really small space, is there a way to collaborate or do you ever put people together? Yes, those are all great questions. Um, so the studios can be used um, however people see fit. So we've had individual artists, we've had um, nonprofit organizations, We've had um, groups that collaborate. We've had um, just two artists that share the studios. Um, most of the time when we've had multiple artists in the same studio, it is because they applied together. Um, we are open to trying to help pair people with other artists, but we find that that can be very challenging. So um, I highly encourage if you're, if you're looking to share the space, I really recommend trying to seek out someone that you know you'll work well with already before submitting the application. Um, but we, you know, if it's if it's um, something that we can help with, we certainly will. Uh, but I, I, I would prefer if you select your own partners rather than me just throwing you with someone on the off chance that, that you don't necessarily get along. I think, I think applying as a group is a, is a much better strategy. Um, and then I'm gonna ask a question of Corey and Athena. Um, is being an artist your full time job? Say again, I'm sorry. Is being an artist your full-time job? Um, as of right now, yes. <laughs> I'm currently um, in grad school, so I'm kind of splitting my time between school and Cherry Street. It's been, um, it's been a little tricky, um, but I've been finding ways to kind of uh, 
make it work with my work. Um, so, so far, so good. But, you know, I'm no stranger to, you know, finding a, a job. <laughs> but yes, full time. Yeah, I'm um yeah, I'm a full-time artist. I came um I literally came right out of corporate America right into um just being full time and doing it for a living. Um and and it wasn't like planned. So um that's why I say the experience down there is um the resources down there are very valuable because it allowed me to grow and be a full-time artist unplanned. <laughs> So, um, uh, yeah, and then again, it's possible. It's, it's very possible. Well, anything's possible, and they allow you to do it. I will say not all of the artists in the studios are full-time artists. Many of them have jobs. Um, Athena and Akori um, are some, <laughs> some of the few that are full-time artists. And a job um, before I got there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was a web designer before I started there. It just things happened with uh, COVID. So I was working and doing, but here I am. And, and one thing um, I should mention is that we do ask that artists commit to 30 hours a week in the studio space. Um, and then we, we ask that 10 of those hours fall on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, which tend to be our peak days. So um, it, is, it is a time commitment, but there are a lot of working individuals that are making it work at Cherry Street too. And can you do your other work at your studio space or is your studio space just have to be your studio work? Um, that's a good question. No, I mean, obviously we would encourage you to be using your studio space as a studio space, um, but it's your space. So you really, you can use it as you choose. Um, we do have some people that, that come and spend time in their studios and, and their studios are, are open. They have an exhibition up or something and they're in there doing other things, working on their laptop. Um, but we do encourage you to, to use it as a studio space as much as possible because um, part of the mission of the peer is to help engage the public in art and help um, help art feel accessible to everyone. And so having these studio spaces that are just open to everyone to kind of see the artistic process helps people understand um, and maybe makes it not quite so scary. So um, yes, I mean, I'm not going to stop you, but we would prefer if those 30 hours are actually making, using your space um, as a maker space. I mean, I've done some freelance web design, graphic design in the space. Sure. Um, you know. I won't pound on your door and tell you to get out. <laughs> um, and then are tours of the space allowed prior to application? And I will add another question to this, which would be, um, can people meet one or two of the artists who are currently there to talk to them about the experience? Yes. Yeah, so um, um, we don't have any sort of like formal tours, but we do encourage you to come down to the space and, and go into the studios. I mean, the studios are there for the general public to come into and to meet the artists. So, um, really anytime you want to, you can come down to the pier and any of the artists would be happy to talk to you about their experiences on the pier. They're used to that. It happens all the time. Um, so I do encourage people to come down and visit the studios and talk to the artists about their experience. Um, I am not there available to give tours, but I am happy to answer questions via email. So come down, explore the space, write down your questions and send them my way and I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so this one's for Athena and Akori. Um, how do you think that being at the pier has been beneficial to your art as like a business? Um, have you had business opportunities? Have you had um, things that might have happened there that's not, that wouldn't have happened somewhere else? Akori, you wanna go first? 
Yeah, yeah, I'll go first. Um, well, for me, um, just having your work in a space where there's a lot of just, you're on the waterfront, right? So you have more foot traffic just going by, just people just walking by. If they're not walking by, they're thinking about the art studio. Some people go there, don't even notice their art studios over there. But you'll you'll catch their eye. You'll get to engage with certain people who didn't who never expect to um, come to that place. And I've had meetings come from that. I've had um, just just being there. I've, I've met with. I've had a, like a, a lot of meetings. Um, I've worked on a lot of dope projects um, that I can't even like talk about. <laughs> um, but I've all like, uh, so, so in the business. It, if you um, it's beneficial there. Oh, gosh. Sorry about that. My phone. Um, I said it's beneficial there. So, um, like I said, but it's a learning experience. So you'll learn how to adapt because it's not, you can't, you can't expect every day to be like, you know, that you're going to generate income from people just walking by in there. Um, or even when there's people there, just because there's a whole bunch of people there doesn't mean that you're going to sell a whole lot of whatever. Um, um, if you have that mindset, like you want to sell a whole bunch of a product, but you're not guaranteed to do that in the environment. Um, so you just have to figure out how to um, acclimate to how maybe the markets work or or how to take advantage of or how to promote your work um, in this environment. Because literally, um, like I said, just because the foot traffic is there doesn't mean they're going to automatically walk into your studio because they may not be comfortable with that but it will force you to learn how to if you want to engage them and um and be and improve your business or your um your revenue if that's what you're looking for to do if you're looking to sell your uh, your work um so yeah i'm i'm not really i'm still learning how to uh do that whole side of the uh, art game um, as far as like selling my work. Um, but I have sold a couple of pieces since I've been there. Um, I, I have like posters and prints and stuff like that. So when uh, they, there is an occasion where people will come up and we'll just buy a stack of things. Like Corey said, it's really no telling when like that happens. It's kind of like, you know, um, the space really is what you make it. Um, so like, if that's your intention, then you'll be doing the marketing, you'll be doing, you know, the engagement and trying to bring, um, those people into your space. Me, I just kind of just, you know, when I'm, uh, being brave and not shy, you know, open my door, um, <laughs> um, when, you know, when I'm engaging with the public or whatever, you know, usually someone will pick up something. Um, and it's it's helping me learn kind of what people are looking for. Um, and I think they just, you know, people just like engaging with the artists anyway. You see people doing cool stuff. Um, I think uh, Kenny uh, initially started doing, he was just doing his, Kenny has a studio downstairs. I forgot what studio number he is, but he initially just started kind of doing like his his work there and then now he's it's kind of turned into somewhat of a hybrid of like his studio and like a like a storefront type thing so um it really is kind of up to you and how much effort you want to put into kind of like you know pushing your stuff out there um the space and, and for how much it costs like it really you can really take advantage of um the area and also too, there's no telling who's gonna walk by. Like, it's it's crazy, you know, or like I'll get an email of somebody who said they walked by my space and I'm like, what? Um, <laughs> you know, and you know, or, you know, or, or people, you know, finding me on Instagram saying, hey, you know, I saw this piece in your window. So it's just, I think it's just all around good to like, you know, have eyes on your stuff and you know anything can happen at any time so it's just you come in just ready to go and if 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 that's what you want to do then you'll be prepared for that as far as having like product ready for people yeah and i just to to add on to that i think um different people treat their studios differently 
um, some really focus on being sort of a, a sales driven environment um, and sort of present their studio that way and maybe have their like corner that they do making in. Um, some people are using their studios because they just need a studio space and they're just making art. Um, and then we try to offer opportunities. I think um, I always encourage the artists that are interested in selling to set up a table outside their studio during the marketplace. Um, we, have, we have two markets per month that we curate internally and then we partner with a lot of organizations to host markets on the pier. Um, and those are great days to work on selling art because people come to the pier in a buying sort of mindset. Um, so we, we do have some studios that are able to um, completely support themselves off of sales in their studio spaces. Um, but it's, you know, obviously it's not a guarantee and it's never going to be consistent because it's selling artwork. So <laughs> we all know who that is. <laughs> And can you talk a little bit about how um, secure the spaces are? So can people bring and leave their computers and equipment? You know, what is the security protocol? Um, and can the public access your spaces without you being there? Oh, good question. Um, so each of the studios has its own lock um, that you you have the key for. Um, we have spare keys, but we don't we don't go in your studios without your permission. Um, they're your space. So so yes, you you lock your studios when you're not there. Um, the public cannot get into the space when you're not there. When we are open to the public, we have um, security staff on site. They do patrols. They keep an eye on the studios. They walk the pier every hour just to make sure everything's okay. And then um, when it's not open to the public, the pier is locked down. Um, you can't get into the building. And we have roving security patrols that check on the studios um, 24 hours a day. Awesome. Um, Corinne, Athena, uh, how often are you there and when are you there? Like what time, when do you find is like, if you were going to apply or think about coming, like what part of your life are you dedicating to being at Cherry Street here? Uh, for me right now, because school is kind of crazy, I try to come there when I'm not like in class. Um, but for the most part, I try to get in there during the weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I was actually just there for that uh, last event, the curator um, thing was pretty cool. Um, I was able to watch it from my window. Um, <laughs> but I was painting also, so I kind of became a part of the event in a way. Um, but yeah, I try to get there as much as I can, but for the most part, I try. Mostly I'm in there on the weekends. Me, I'm, 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 you know, I was there 25, then almost 24 seven, like my first, uh, my first year. Um, now my hours, the only reason I'm probably, I'm, I'm there all hours and after hours. I use it. I really use, like, I use the studio a lot. Like, you like, I think like, I'll be there and just work and then until I'm tired and go like, so I'll be leaving and you're coming in. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, and uh and then i'll like i can go all night or i can you know so for me it's that's why i say it's really um it's just really to have back good to have uh, that you have access 24 7 because when i was interviewed about the space um they asked me how much would i use the studio and i said well how much access do i have to it because <laughs> so, um the freedom is really also what makes it great that you can just leave and come and I'll be there during business hours and then I can get all my work done that, that uninterrupted after everyone leaves. You know? I think um, I think if if the person in question is is interested in peak times to be there, I would say those tend to be evenings and weekends. And a lot of the foot traffic at Cherry Street here is very much programming driven. So um, we have a programming calendar that's shared with all the artists so they can see exactly what's going on. And you can use that as a key to be like, oh, well, there's an event this Wednesday. So I might, I'm gonna go in on Wednesday at 3 p.m. when I'm not normally there at Wednesdays. Um, and then um, the other thing that we found to be really helpful is if it is possible for you to have certain set hours that you sort of publish so you know 
I'm going to be there. I I'm there Fridays from two to eight. And so you have that posted and you tell us that, and then we're happy to promote that, that those are hours when they can, someone can come in and definitely see you. So if you're able to do that, I highly recommend it. Um, post your hours in your window, even if it's, you're only committing to one day a week being there set hours. Um, I, even that is, is really helpful. Awesome. And I, I do want to give a shout out to June, who is here as a, um, as a participant. She was the one who created Curator Festival that Athena just mentioned. <laughs> um, okay, another question. I know we're getting right up on time. So I just uh, would be, um, can you just briefly run through Oh, wait, sorry, let me, let me, I was going to ask my own questions. Let me actually ask, ask the one that was put up here. Um, what is parking like? Oh, good question. That is a really good question. Parking is a challenge. Um, I will be honest. Um, there is street parking um, that is metered uh, in front of the pier. Um, it is somewhat limited. We do have a parking lot that DRWC operates at um, Market Street that um, we will give you a monthly parking pass at an extremely discounted rate. Um, typically parking there is $20, $20 a day. Um, I believe that the parking pass is $110 a month. Um, other than that, it's, it's street parking. And then we encourage people to use public transportation. We are this close to finishing our multimodal uh, bike trail. And um, I'm looking forward to using that personally because I live up in the Fishtown area and I'm going to use it just to commute straight down. Um, but yeah, so so we'll be honest, parking parking is definitely definitely a challenge. Um, we do allow artists to pull up on our apron if you're like loading or unloading. You can pull up on the apron, you can unload your car, and then you and then move your car to a parking space or or go home and and take public transportation back. Um, so we do, if, if you need to, you know, you have 17 giant canvases, you need to move into your studios. We're, we're happy to help facilitate that. Awesome. And so I have two final questions. Um, one is, will the artist studio number increase at any point? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Um, not currently. We don't currently have any plans to increase the numbers of studio spaces. Um, but there are, you know, there are, are ways of participating outside of the studio spaces, you know, if um, depending on what you what your medium of choice is, um, you can become a programmatic partner and, and use the, the general space as a home base. Um, but Infrastructure wise, um, we're pretty wedded to the 14 artist studios at this point in time. Jody. Jody Milkman is our executive vice president of the Delaware River Waterfront Corporation. I guess if there's one message I would really hope rings true, as you can hear from the fantastic artists that we have in this call, you get out of it what you put into it. And the whole spirit of this this peer is to, is to showcase Philadelphia's creative community and to create the opportunity for a creative community. These artists just on the screen today have collaborated together and have created spectacular exhibitions in the gallery and together, individually and together. Um, we had an artist just recently create a whole non-traditional event for the peer, which brought over 2,500 people to the peer and then therefore exposed all kinds of people to the artists that were there. We have markets as Sarah and Emma have talked about that bring people to the pier that then see what's going on. Um, we are looking for people that will add to the space, add to the equation. The one plus one equals three really works here. Um, and we really want people who wanna be part of that community, who wanna benefit from that community, who wanna benefit from the collaboration. I mean, that's what will really make you stand out in the application process is what you can add to the equation. Um, because as you've heard, these, these artists have grown together um, and, and benefited from each other's expertise. And the idea that 
that younger or newer artists can benefit from more seasoned artists and they can share their trades and collaborate. I mean, that, that's the spirit of what the intention of this nonprofit space. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure you'll all realize with the rent that, you know, it, it's, it's not meant to, for us to make money. It's, uh, it's there for us to help sustain the peer and to support emerging artists as, as Emma and Sarah have said. So really what we're looking about for and what will help people stand out is, is somebody who wants to invest themselves and, and really try to take something away from the experience. That, that will be something that, that will really make you stand out in the application process. Very true. I, Thank you, Debbie. I guess on, on that note, Sarah, would you mind just recapping the, app, the application process real quick? Yes, so um, studio applications are due on October 22nd, um, and then they will be reviewed by an internal panel and then an external panel. Um, and then we will be reaching out mid-November for artists that make the second round, and they will be invited um, to do an interview with the, the selection committee. Um, and then we will be notifying artists in mid-December um, if they were accepted into the third cohort. And uh, the studio leases will start on February 1st of 2022. Um, through all of the questions that were in the Q&A and have been submitted, um, so just give me that up. Thank you. Um, well, I, I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, and again, I'm, um, I encourage you all to come down to the pier um, ask Athena and Akori questions in person and feel free to ask any of the other artists on the pier. Um, they all really love talking about their experiences there. So um, they're happy to share with you. Um, and yeah, and if you have any additional questions that didn't get addressed today, again, please feel free to email them to me directly. Um, and I will also happily forward questions on to anyone else who's who's here if you have specific questions for Athena or a Corey. Thank you. There's my email address. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And, and special thanks to Athena and a Corey for being here. I know it's it's never fun to do these things, but you guys did no a problem. job. <laughs> Athena hates them, but she does such a good job. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Anytime.